Cool. So I'm going to talk about prompting your way to power and just everything that we can do with prompts and, and all that. So let's just dive right in and talk a little bit about prompts in general, what they are and what we can do with them. So a prompt is just a set of instructions that are sent to generative AI models so that we can accomplish certain tasks. So anytime that we're using any of these generative AI models, we have to put in a prompt to be able to get what we want out of it. So really, that goes into the aspect of prompt engineering, where natural language and how we communicate is kind of becoming the new programming language in a way. So it can be really powerful to help us create solutions. So I wanted to just level set the fundamentals of creating a prompt and the things that we should consider when we're crafting these prompts. So we have tasks, context, expectations, and output. So an example of a prompt should, a well-written prompt, should have all of these aspects in it. So this kind of highlights kind of the, the flow, the formula that we have here for crafting a prompt. So starting out with the task. So create a product feedback summary then giving it some additional context based on recent customer reviews. And this is where you might pass in some dynamic context here. Then we need to level set with the expectations. So the summary should be identify uh, key themes, overall sentiment, and any recurring issues or praises. And finally, we can tweak the output and kind of specify how we want the data to be outputted. So we can say format this to be clear and concise and present any information in an easy to understand manner suitable for a marketing team meeting. So that's where you can really define how you want the output to be. You can also format if you want it to be outputted in, say, JSON or CSV or, or those kind of specifications as well. So if you follow this kind of formula here, then you can kind of be ensured that you have a well-crafted prompt. And if you want more information, all of this is kind of taken from the AI Builder Prompt Engineering Guide. So this is applicable not only to prompts that you're creating in AI Builder, but prompts for any of the, the co-pilots that you're using here, Microsoft 365 Copilot, or any of the AI tools, really. This will kind of ensure that you have a well-crafted prompt. And you can go to aka.ms forward slash prompt guide if you want to learn more about all of that. But let's talk about where do we actually use these prompts in the Power Platform. So we can use these all across the Power Platform here to build solutions. So we have Copilot experiences in Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI, Power Pages, Copilot Studio to be able to take a prompt and get to a solution really fast with, with all of this. But we also have that in AI Builder. So there is a model specifically for AI Builder for interacting with generative AI. So there's a create tech with GPT model where we can pass in and create AI prompts that go and call these large language models and do all sorts of things, you know, creating text, summarizing text, um, and all of this kind of stuff that we can do. And, you know, one of the hardest things with this is just even knowing what you can do with it. A few things with AI prompts, if you haven't looked at them recently and this model that we can do, um, we have GPT-40 support. So that just went in preview. So if you want to be able to take advantage of the latest and greatest model there, we can do that with these AI prompts. We also have capability to format the output. So before we could only have that as text. Now we can actually get a JSON response output natively uh, by toggling on the output here. So that's something that is in preview as well for AI prompts and AI builder. And the other new thing is we have grounding. So before we can, you know, it was really hard to kind of pass in any data or do any kind of grounding because we didn't really have a mechanism with AI Builder prompts. Now we do. Now we can reference Dataverse tables directly in the prompt that we're building to get those more tailored responses and reference our business data. So these are all the possibilities here. Now let's kind of talk about what if we don't know what we can even do and where to start? Because, you know, having that blank text box there, there's so many possibilities. So where can we get some ideas of things that we could do? Well, that's what the prompt library is for. We have prompts from the community and from myself and other team members that are already in there that you can go and look at to see what are some things we can do with the GPT model and AI builder in uh, Copilot and Power Apps and Power Automate, Power Pages and Copilot Studio. So if you want to get some ideas, we have a easy way to browse it here in the Sample Solution Gallery. And if you want to contribute as well, you can go to the Power Platform dash prompts and that takes you directly to the GitHub repo where you can share your own prompts. So I figured let's walk through a demo. We'll highlight some of the prompts that are out there and just show you how quickly you can prompt like a pro and get started with the prompt library building some Power Platform solutions. So let's take a look at the repo. 
So again, this right here, if you go to Power Dash Prompts, so aka.ms, this will take you to the solution gallery where you can just browse all the prompts that we have here so you can see some of the latest ones that we have. So one right here that I figured I'd show is this course registration app. So this is also on GitHub. Um, so Scott actually created this one. This will allow us to use the new capability in Power Apps where we can create a multi-table application. So uh, the cool thing about this all is these prompts are tested. So we make sure that we run through them and that they get the output that we want. So I can go and copy this prompt right here and we can go over to Power Apps. So if you have the new, uh, let me just backtrack one. If you want to have this multi-table experience that's in preview, um, you can toggle this try new data experience on in the upper right-hand corner of make.powerapps.com. And then now if we go to start with data, we'll see this new option here, this new screen to create new tables. And this is where we can go start with Copilot and we can put in a prompt here. So I could put in the prompt that we got um, from Scott's sample. Uh, and the repo, and that will go and create and suggest a data structure to handle this. And you'll notice if we look at his prompt, it's create an app to manage student course registration, including students, courses, registrations, instructors, and departments. So being really specific on what you want. So you could have left it as create an app to manage student course registration and just kind of have it go at it. But if you know right off the bat the different things that you want out of the prompt and the things that you want to manage, you can go ahead and specify those to make sure that you're kind of getting what you want. And if for those of you who might have not seen this yet, this is that new multi-table app experience that we have. Uh, in Power Apps to be able to create this. So we have an entity relationship diagram that we can go modify. So it's created relationships for us, say between the course and the department and the instructor and the student, all of that without us having to do anything. So we have a complete data structure. We can look at the data and each one of these tables is created. And it's not only created the tables and the relationships, but all of the columns of the tables for us as well, just by that one single prompt that we got from the prompt library. And it's created sample data. So we can have a fully functional application application, uh, Canvas app in this case, for us just by using that prompt. So now we can save and open the app, and that will go and create all of these underlying tables, which are Dataverse tables, and create a Canvas application for us. So it'll have a um, main screen there where we can kind of browse across the different tables, and then the typical screen that we're used to seeing where we have galleries on the left-hand side and a form control on the right where we can kind of edit the data. And some of the things that I didn't really show there, and I think I have a new tab open that we can also do in this new experience, if we go to View Prompts, if we have existing data that we're starting from, we can right here in this experience import data from Excel or CSV or SharePoint lists and import that into this Dataverse structure and have that be a part of this um, entity relationship diagram. And we can change, we can delete, we can have it suggest more things if we're not sure what else that we need here. We can do all of this uh, right, right from here from this Copilot experience. So now this is going to go and create the application, and this is usually the part that takes <laughs> the longest here is just creating because it's you know we have have what five four or five different tables there that's creating for us and is creating an app the other cool thing about the app it creates is responsive out of the box so we don't have to do anything else it utilizes containers and all of that for us so we have a nice responsive app for us from from using this prompt and there you go it's it's getting there it's loading <laughs> almost almost there um, an export button would be cool yeah I'm looking at the comments here yeah we, we need to we need to tell the team to export that uh, to Visio so we can see that diagram. Yeah, <laughs> gotta love it, loading, loading. Um, so that, that's one example here, and I can come back to this once it's finally loaded, but let's, while we're waiting for that to load, let's just take a look at the GitHub side of the prompt library so we can see kind of how it's organized. So as we mentioned, we have AI Builder, Copilot Studio, Power Apps, Prompts, and everything. So everything's in its own folder. So if we go into Copilot Studio here, the next thing why that's loading that I wanted to show is uh, we have this project brief creator topic. So this is an example of a prompt for Copilot Studio. So one of the things we can do in Copilot Studio is create a topic from a prompt. So this one will kind of guide a user through being able to draft a project brief. So I'm going to copy that 
And there we go. And before we move on, now we can finally see the output of that prompt, that perhaps prompt that we have. So here's a landing screen that we have with all of those different tables outlined here. And we can go into, say, the courses. And now we have that screen where we can see all the, the sample data with the courses there and be able to add and edit courses and, and with that for with all of our tables. So we have a home screen. You'll notice also this little offline button. So when you use this experience, it's automatically enabling the Canvas mobile offline capability for you. So this is an offline capable app too, which is really cool. So again, it shows you how a, one simple prompt can get you to a working solution within just a couple of minutes there. So let's segue over to, to Copilot Studio like I was talking about. So I'm going to take this prompt that uh, Renato just submitted two days ago, and we'll see how we can get a Copilot Studio topic to help us with this project brief. So we're going to go over in this Copilot to topics, and we'll say add a new topic from a description with Copilot. So I can put in his prompt there, and I can say project brief for the topic name. So what he's asking it to do is to assist in creating a project brief by providing them the name, objective, deliverable scopes, timeline, stakeholders, everything that you would want in a project brief here. And it's going to go to work and create all of the different elements in this topic that we would need to be able to collect that information. So as you see, it's kind of going um, and adding stuff as I scroll down. So we can have several different questions here. So not only did that fill in the description of what this topic does, but but it filled in all the questions that we need to get this information from the user. So the name of the project, the objective, scope, key deliverables, timeline, all of that. And then it puts that in a message with an output so we can copy and paste that, say, into a doc. Or we can even add some power automate into this that automatically creates a doc based off of this project information that we're tracking here. So another great example of how we can quickly get to value with a prompt from that repo. Now let's, for the last thing that I want to show here, just AI Builder and how we can use some of those prompts. So there's, if we look in the, the repo here, uh, we have an AI Builder section and we have tons of different prompts here. So one of the ones that I have is say this IT expert. So it can kind of help troubleshoot issues. So I want it to be able to user put in an issue here and then we're going to have it do a bullet point list of steps that they can troubleshoot uh, the issue for. So for this, we can build these prompts directly in the AI prompt section here. So I can see we have this IT troubleshooter prompt. And this is where we can put in some dynamic content here. So we can have multiple inputs that we pass into our prompt. And we can use these in apps and in our automations as well. And these are some of the settings I was talking about as far as output and um, if you want to use the GPT-40 model. But an example of this I could show really quick is using this in a Power App. So you can add in any of those AI prompts that you create from the prompt library or on your own as a data source. So if you just go to add data, we have this AI model section right here. And all of the models and all the prompts that you create show up here. So you just click and add that as a data source. And we can call it, say, from this button, just by referencing the name of the prompt and passing in any required data. So I'm going to pass in, in this case, the value of this text input. So if I were to try this out, I can say, what issue are you facing? I can say my laptop has a blue screen help, right? And we could submit that, and it will go and call that AI prompt, pass our input into that, and get you some information there. And sometimes i got to be a little bit more specific. There you go. So there's our step-by-step -step guide. So, you know, restart your laptop. That's always <laughs> the, the issue, right? Have you tried uh, plugging it in and restarting it? Uh, boot in safe mode, system restore. So now we have all the steps that we need to be able to try to troubleshoot this issue on your own before you go and actually submit the ticket to the help desk. So that's just an example of a simple AI prompt that you can go plug and play into your solutions. Now, now that we've seen the power of all of this, what's the benefit from you for using a library? Well, as David alluded to earlier, uh, we have new badges for this. So we really highly encourage you. I think prompts are a great way to quickly get to value in the Power Platform, building solutions and extending your solutions like we just saw with AI Builder prompts um, to be able to build those solutions. and. You know, a lot of times people just don't know where to start or what you can even do with it. So if you are using any of the Copilot capability, if you're using prompts and uh, you have something that you'd like to share with the community, you can go submit it to the repo there and get some of these special badges. So for September, we have Prompt Timber. October, we have Prompt Tober. Those are only for your contributions for that month. And then we have the Prompt Pro badge as well that you can get anytime that you submit a prompt. So lots of opportunities to get some badges to show your Prompt Pro expertise and share 
share that with the community so that we can all benefit from this and get solutions built faster. So I hope you take advantage of that. And thank you all and hope to see more prompts soon. Thank you.